Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Dr. Wright Breaks It Down For You. My name is Jessica, and I'm here with my dad, as always, Dr. Wright. Hey, Dad. Hi, Jessica. So this week's topic is about soap. You know, I get a lot of ideas when I'm in the shower. You know, I was washing my hair the other day, and I just got to wondering how soap works and why washing your hair makes the grease go away. That sounds... Like kind of a weird thing to be thinking about in the shower. I was thinking about it. So, Dad, I thought you could lend a little bit of insight on that. How does soap exactly clean grease out of your hair? How does how does soap clean clean things? You know, soap is really amazing. Cleaning grease off is tough. What soap does is act like a chemical connector that connects the oil to the water. And so, when you wash the oil or the grease with water, it picks up the oil and grease. See, water won't do that unless you have the soap, the connector. And it's really amazing how it works. How does it work? How does it form these connections? To explain it, if you don't mind, we've got to go back to chemistry a little bit. First of all, there's two basic kinds of matter. There's matter that's magnetic, that sticks to things, and there's matter that's non-magnetic and is kind of slippery. Magnetic stuff stays together because there's a plus and minus or a polar nature to it. It's like a magnet. Non-magnetic things don't have any poles at all, and they're really, really slippery. They're called non-polar. Oils are slippery, and butter is slippery because it doesn't have any magnetic properties. Now, what makes something polar in the first place is if there's a bunch of electrons stuck on one side of the molecule. It's kind of like if a bunch of people were to sit in a canoe or sit on one side of a boat so that it tilts. If all the electrons are kind of stuck on one side of the molecule, then it's going to have a negative side and a positive side. Magnetic things that are polar clump together. And sugar is sticky because it's polar. Glue is sticky because it's polar. And water is sticky to a degree because it's polar also. Non-magnetic things are slippery. Wait, is water slippery or sticky? Because water seems like it would be more slippery than sticky. The truth of the matter is water's magnetic. And there's a really neat trick you can do by taking a magnet and putting it by a stream of water, and the water will actually be pulled towards a magnet. Wow. If you were to take a syringe full of water out in space and to squeeze it out in space, the water would all glob together like a big sphere. If you took oil and squeeze it out into space, it would just vaporize and fall apart because oil is non-magnetic. And this is the real problem. How can you get water, which has got magnetic properties, to stick to oil that has no magnetic properties? And that's where soap comes in. Soap is the connector. Oh. If you can imagine this for a second, and it's really true, soap looks just like a candy sucker. It's got a big round head on one end that's really sticky, and it's got a really long tail on the other end that's mm -hmm. not sticky. When you take soap with this really weird-looking candy sucker shape and you put it in oil, the long tails actually get stuck among the long tails of the grease and the oil. They get intertwined. Oh. On the other hand, the end of the soap that is magnetic sticks to the water. So what happens is, if you have oil on your hands from working on your bike or something, yeah. you add soap, and all of a sudden, the soap puts its tails inside the oil, but you've got to rub your hands together. Mm -hmm. And then the water grabs the sticky ends of the soap and rips the oil apart and carries it away. So that's why you need some degree of friction as well. You can't just pour soap on an oil stain and expect it to just disappear. You're absolutely right. You have to agitate the tails of the soap into the grease. And then you've got to add water. And what that does is it tears the grease apart. And so a hunk of grease is stuck on the tail of the soap. And the polar head or the magnetic head of the soap is stuck in the water. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I was going to say like pigs stealing bird eggs on angry Oh, angry, the angry birds? Angry birds. <laughs> the bottom line is you're picking up the oily soap with the water. So soap doesn't make the oil go away. It just makes it dispersed. The oil, the grease isn't going away by any means. It's just breaking up into tiny pieces. Right. It's getting hooked to the water and being carried away. It's fracturing it. A long time ago, they had, I think it was Billy Mays, and he'd put black ink inside of water, and then he'd put OxyClean in there. And see, the ink's gone. The ink is not gone. What the OxyClean does is it breaks the big oil molecules into little pieces so you can't see them anymore. Mm. So taking a glass on the ground and stopping on it so much that, oh, see, the glass disappeared. The glass isn't gone. It's just been made into such small pieces you can't see it anymore. And that's exactly what the soap does. The soap mm. grabs a little bit of grease, 
grabs a little bit of water and then fractures the grease into such small pieces you can't see it anymore and you wash it away. It's exactly huh. right. You mentioned washing your hair. You've yeah. got to be a little careful with soap sometimes because remember your body has oils on the outside of it and your hair has oils on it. Mm -hmm. And those oils are important to keeping your skin nice and strong. If you use too strong a soap, what happens is the actual oils that preserve your skin are removed. That oh, can, wow. And that can cause your hair to fracture or your skin. I know sometimes if I've been working a real long time on my car or something and I'm washing my hands with hard soap, my knuckles will crack. And that's because the actual oils have been taken out of my skin. The skin loses its resiliency, and next thing you know, you're getting cracks on your skin. Because no. there are stronger soaps, right? Like there are milder soaps that won't take all of the oil out of your body. But there are really strong soaps that you can use that really are aggressive about taking oil out of your skin. Exactly. That's why oftentimes they'll say use conditioner after you wash your hair. That puts a little bit of good oil back into your hair. Or you might want to use some lotion on your hands during the wintertime to get that oil back in your skin. Hmm. Interesting. So now I have lots of things to think about in the shower while I'm washing my hair. Well, thanks so much, Dad, for taking the time to look up all that information and share that with us. Tune in next time. We will have some other delightful podcast about another delightful topic. All right. Thanks so much, Dad. Bye-bye now. Bye.